this is a series of videos on the topic pension funds it's based on the core reading of the CT5 IFOA exam which you can refer to for further details companies provide pension benefits to their employees Now, pensions are paid when full-time employment ceases. Now, these pension benefits can be paid by the insurance company, can be paid by the government, or you may want to call it the state, or it can be paid by the employer. Now, we will consider pension benefits related to salary now benefits are paid when you retire uh, at your retirement age and we like to call that age retirement benefits again benefits are paid there are four main um, kinds of benefits that we'll be looking at uh, age retirement benefits uh, those will be the benefits that will be paid when you retire due to the fact that you have attained normal retirement age. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can also have uh, death in service benefits. That means when the member of the scheme dies while in service, uh, we pay a benefit. We can also have ill health retirement. That means uh, people who or other members of the scheme who retire due to ill health there will be benefits as well. And finally, we have um, withdrawal benefits. Those who choose to withdraw from the scheme will have withdrawal benefits. Good. We have uh, two types of pension plans. Defined benefit plans, where benefits are fixed and usually defined as a function of the final salary. Again, defined benefit plans, where benefits are fixed and usually defined as a function of the final salary. You will see um, formulas of the form, let's say N over 80 times FAS. This is a typical formula that we will see in a defined benefit plan where N is the number of years of service, 1 over 80 is what we call the accrual factor, and then we have your FAS, which is your final average salary. We'll be talking about these terms in detail but this is the typical formula that you will see in our um, study of pension funds now the other type of uh, pension plan is your defined contribution plan where we have let's read this where the employer and the employee okay they make periodic contributions to a fund so let's say we have a fund here and we have the employee and the employer both make periodic contributions say monthly to a fund and these contributions are invested and accumulated until the until needed for retirement that means at the age of retirement that this fund that you have accumulated will be used to buy say an NVT and things like that so a defined contribution plan is basically a saving scheme okay to summarize uh, we'll be dealing with uh, four kinds of benefits, age retirement benefits, death in service benefits, ill health retirement benefits, and withdrawal benefits. And we'll be spending quite a bit of time on defined benefits, uh, defined benefit plans. And we will say a few words about defined contribution plans at the end of uh, the section on pension funds. First, let's look at age retirement. Age retirement benefits are paid when a member of the scheme retires because he or she has attained retirement age. Let's define normal pension age. Normal pension age, okay? 
NPA, normal pension age. In some books, they refer to this as normal retirement age. It is a fixed age. Example, age 65, at which members retire due to age. Good. In some schemes, you can also opt to retire before the normal pension age, and it's called early retirement. They may offer you retirement between ages 60 and 65. So if you do have an option where you can retire between ages 60 and 65, well, you can do so and you can opt for something called early retirement. Okay, so again, what is NPA? It is normal pension age. It's a fixed age uh, stated in the scheme at which a member will retire due to age. Next, let's talk about pension entitlement. How much are you entitled to get per annum when you retire? So pension entitlement is related to the length of pensionable service. Now this pensionable service is defined in the scheme rules. Okay, it may be, for example, the number of complete years of membership in the scheme. So, again, pension entitlement, pension entitlement, the amount of money that you can get per annum when you retire, it is related to the length of pensionable service. Next, we want to talk about pensionable salary. This is also defined in the scheme. Um, it can take the form of either the final salary or the final average salary or the career average salary. Again, when we talk about pensionable salary, sometimes we like to call this just PS. Okay, it can either be the final salary, final average salary or the career average salary. Let's talk about this. Let's say our retirement age is 65, okay? So let's call it 64, 63, 62. Now, when we talk about final salary, we are talking about the annual salary at retirement. So if you have to retire at age 65, we are talking about the final salary here, the salary that you earn from age 64 to 65, okay? The other version of uh, pensionable salary is your final average salary, and that is your average salary in the last, say, three years. Okay, The average annual salary in the last three years, for example. It can be three years, it can be five years, Okay, before retirement. So if it's three years, then we'll take the salary for this year, the salary for this year, and the salary for this year, add them up and divide by three, and you'll get your final average salary. And then we have the career average salary, also known as lifetime earnings. It is the average annual salary over membership of the scheme. So if you have been a member of the scheme for the last, let's say, 20 years, then you add your salary over the last 20 years, and then you divide it by 20, and you'll get your career average salary. Okay, so again, your, pension, your pensionable salary can either be your final salary, your final average salary, or your career average salary. Please take note, salaries are sometimes adjusted for inflation before being averaged. Pension entitlement. It may be 1 80th of the pensionable salary at retirement for each year of service. 1 over 80. Let me circle that. It may be 1 over 80th of the pensionable salary at retirement for each year of service. Okay? For each year of service. Now, this 1 over 80 uh, is a typical accrual rate. It can be 1 over 60 as well. Okay, so when you uh, work out a question on pensions, um, read the question carefully. Example, a level pension on retirement at age 65 may be equal to N over 60 times PS. N will be the number of complete years of service and 
PS will be your pensionable salary. In this case, let's say your pensionable salary is your final salary. That is the annual salary at retirement. Okay, this is a typical example of a defined benefit plan uh, formula. Okay, you will get N over 60 times PS. For example, if your N, let's say you have uh, 30 years of uh, complete service. Okay, if you have 30 years of uh, complete service, and let's say your pensionable salary, let's say your final salary was uh, 100,000, yeah? So, you will get a level pension per year amounting to 30 over 60 times 100K, which will be, you will get, let me get it again, you will get 50K a year. Okay, that's it. Next, let's talk about ill health retirement. Now, you can retire due to ill health and get a pension after a minimum length of service uh, in your organization. Again, you can retire due to ill health and get a pension after a minimum length of scheme service. Now, the pension benefits may be more generous okay, than the accrued pension based on service to date. So, if you are dealing with pensionable service, they may give you a minimum of 20 years or based on service that would have been completed at normal pension age. Okay, that's what we mean by uh, more generous. Okay, it, you can get a, um, they might give you a minimum of 20 years for pensionable service or based on service that would have been completed had you retired at normal pension age. Now let's move on. We'll go to death on service. Okay, death in service benefit. Death in service benefit, if you are an active member of the scheme and you die, what are the possible benefits? Yeah. So, if you're an active member and you die, possible benefits will be, say they'll pay you a lump sum, a multiple, say a multiple of salary. Example, I'll repeat. Uh, a possible benefit is they can pay you a lump sum that will be a multiple of your salary, say two times your last salary drawn. Okay, so let's say in the previous year of service, you had uh, drawn a salary of uh, 40,000 bucks, then they'll give you two times 40,000 bucks as, as a lump sum. Or they can also give you uh, another possible benefit would be a portion of expected pension that you'll get at age 65, it'll be paid to your spouse. Okay, a portion of the expected pension at age 65 will be paid to the spouse. Now let's move to withdrawal benefits. Now, withdrawal benefits, if you leave the employer before NPA due to other reasons, yeah, due to other reasons, then those stated above, you may get one, you may get a refund of your contributions. Okay, you may get a refund of your contributions and this may include uh, plus interest. Yeah, This may include plus interest. Or you can get a deferred pension payable from your normal pension age based on completed service on leaving. I'll repeat, you can get a deferred pension payable from your normal pension age based on completed service on leaving and the pensionable salary on leaving. Very important, yeah? Uh, as an idea, we will do deferred benefits uh, next time. Uh, there's no emphasis on deferred benefits in our present course. Again, you can get a deferred pension payable from NPA based on completed service on leaving and the pensionable salary on leaving. 